Um, so any of you, if you are local, don't forget, you can go ahead and sign up for any of our classes that are coming up. We've got a lot of them that are going to be coming up, but I will apologize with these two events we had last week and then this one. I'm a little bit behind on getting everything up and running. Um, so I will let you know via email, but just really, if you check daily and you say, hey, you know, um, go ahead and check on those daily on the, on the calendar, you'll see them up there. So we will have all of that. So this is going to be fun. We've already got 15 of us on here. Hi, Brenda Carter. You haven't actually like popped on yet, but she's down in Seymour. So I don't know what her internet connection is. And Kathy Neal has just joined us. Hi, Kathy. Oh, this is wonderful to see everybody. That's so exciting. Um, when we do our fitting club, I've told some of you about our fitting club, but if you decide to join the fitting club, this is kind of going to be the way we're going to do some of the stuff is, um, I've just discovered that apparently on Zoom, they do a lot of different things with education, and I'm trying to learn more about it right now, but this is kind of cool. I don't know if you you probably have noticed in the background, I've got this cool University of Sewing thing going on. Um, I just learned how to do that yesterday. So it's not perfect, but it, it's pretty cool. <laughs> so I've been having fun with this. So, um, okay, let me see what else is going on here. We haven't got anybody else sitting in the waiting room yet. So, oh, hey, Alice, how are you? Hey. <laughs> nice to see you. So, no, this is really fun. I think that this is going to be, <laughs> this is going to work out well. So Rhonda is over here over, um, if all of you've got some different people you can see, Rhonda's here and she's from Euronotions and Euronotions is who owns Schmitz. And if you didn't know it, Schmitz needles, when you get your Bernina sewing machine and you buy and it says Bernina needles. Well, actually, those are Schmidt's needles. <laughs> so oh, I just you just let out a know. secret. <laughs> Those are Schmidt's needles. So we're not like we're not we're not trading teams here or anything. We're still on the same team. We're all good. Um, it's very cool to have the ability to actually talk. To somebody who works for Schmidt's. Um, and Rhonda is going to do, I'm sure, an amazing job. She speaks all over the country. And this has really been really fun to, um, I got to talk to her earlier today. And, oh, we haven't got anybody more yet. You know what? Um, <laughs> if we go on for another minute or two and nobody else joins us, I'm going to let Rhonda take this over. And you guys, um, probably the best thing to do is just mute yourself. So we can do that. And then that way nobody will interrupt Rhonda's speech. But over in the right-hand side on your Zoom call stuff, there's a way where you can, um, on, on the bottom level, it says chat. Oh, and I need to do that. Oh, that's so cute. Um, so... There's a chat thing on the bottom toolbar. And if you click on it, it will put the chat over on the right-hand side so you can see it. And you'll be able to ask questions. Now, Rhonda, can you see those questions? Or yes, I can. Okay, yes, so I can. You'll be able, she'll be able to answer your questions. But I want everybody to know, I'm going to take one quick moment here and let you know that we carry a whole lot of Schmitz needles, but we've put together two wonderful bundles for you guys tonight, a quilting and piecing bundle and a, a knit sewing bundle. And I'm going to show you how you can find those on our website. And once I do that, um, I will wait until uh, Rhonda does her thing. And I'll, then when I come back on, before we go to q and I'll show you those but you have to stay till the end so that you can hear the coupon code for a special deal for all of you who participate in this. And I'm just going to tell you 
that those of you who are participating, you're going to get a special deal from the University of Sewing. That that's not available to anybody else. So watch this. We get to the end of the q and I'm going to close up everything. And then you're going to get an opportunity to go ahead and get this special deal that I'm not offering any of our other customers. So I'm going to go ahead. Rhonda, I'm not seeing anybody else looking to come in yet. So I think that probably here we are at about 10 after. I think we've done everybody justice and let them be able to come in. So I'm going to mute myself and you're going to be able to go ahead and jump right in. Okay. Well, thank you, Margaret, for inviting me here tonight. You know what? I'm actually supposed to be um, at Smets in Germany this month. <laughs> but the darn pandemic has taken care of my travel schedule. I was supposed to go last year. Then I was supposed to go this month. So you know what? I'd rather spend time with you. So <laughs> I'm glad this has worked out. So I'm actually in the Chicago area, and this is my own sewing room. And don't you think every sewing room should have an eight-foot banner of the Smets collar chart? <laughs> So anyway, I'm delighted to be here tonight, and um, we're going to talk about Smets Needles. My talk will be about 45 minutes and in three sections, and at the end of each section, I'll be looking for questions that are pertinent to that particular topic, and I'll answer them, and at the end, uh, with other questions, I'll scoop in and answer any of those other various questions. So as you have questions that pop up in your mind, go ahead and just chat, um, type them into the chat and I'll try to keep an eye on that. And I'm sure Margaret um, will be keeping an eye on the chat also. So when I was um, traveling throughout North America, I was doing about 25 events throughout the year. And I was always traveling with my Smet Super Demo Needle. And this is 17 inches tall. And I'll tell you, my luggage was always inspected by TSA. But I'm still traveling, now just virtually. And I'm still traveling with my Smet Super Needle. So I'm going to first start off by talking about the physical needle. Because I think when you're aware of the parts of the needle and their function, it helps to influence um, your decision on what needle type and size to use. I'll talk a little bit about the color chart and what all those numbers mean on that little pack of needles. Then I'll jump into specific needle types for uh, piecing and quilting, sewing with knits, and then I have a mystery question. And it's probably a question you've asked yourself too, so I'll answer that. So let's first talk about the physical needle. Now mine is on um, a little wooden display stand just for ease, but I think even virtually you can see at the very top of the needle is a beveled edge, a beveled edge. And that's referred to as the butt of the needle. And you might think, hmm, so what, a beveled edge? <laughs> well, now stop and think about it. When you go to insert a new needle, you don't have a lot of wiggle room, right? So the top of the needle is beveled for easier insertion into your needle holder. Our home sewing machine needles require a flat shank, this top area here of the needle, a flat shank, again, for perfect positioning into your um, needle holder. This transitional area is referred to as the shoulder of the needle. And I hope you've noticed that when you go to buy your Smets needles, there's either one or two bands of color on the shoulder. And we'll talk about those color codes shortly. We have the length of the needle, which is referred to as the blade of the needle. And Smets measures the actual blade size to come up with the sizes that we're familiar with sizes 70, 80, 90, et cetera. So that's an actual measurement of the blade. On the front of your needle, how many of you have noticed a groove? 
even on your little two inch piece of steel, you can see and feel the groove. And what is the purpose of the groove? The groove is going to cradle your thread so it moves evenly and smoothly down the length of the needle to the eye. Your thread should not be flip-flopping back and forth, but it should move smoothly and evenly down the length of the needle to the eye for a quality stitch. We have the point and the tip, and these change according to different needle types. And then on the back of the needle, how many of you have noticed this indentation above the eye, this indentation above the eye? This is referred to as the scarf of the needle. And it's a very important part to the needle. The purpose of the scarf, well, when your needle passes through your fabric and your throat plate, the bobbin hook has to come up and catch that top thread in order to create the stitch. So the bobbin hook needs passing room in order to create that, the stitch. So this little carved out area is referred to as the scarf of the needle. Now, let me bring up some of my slides here. And... I've got a nice picture of the, of the needle that clearly illustrates the, the needle parts, the butt, the shank, the shoulder, the blade, the groove, the point, the tip, and I haven't mentioned the eye yet. And I consider the eye to be one of the most important features to the Smets needle. Your everyday needle, the workhorse of all needle types is the universal needle. The eye of the universal needle is about 40% the width of the blade. But other needle types have larger eyes. Look at the eye of the embroidery needle, and you can see that the eye is wider. And when you look at the eye of the top stitch in the metallic needles, you can see that the eye is not only wider, but it's also elongated. So what does a larger eye mean to you when you're sewing? A larger eye means there's less stress on the thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. So if you're sewing and you have problems with threads that are breaking or shredding, what should you do? You either need to move up a needle size or change to a different needle type that has a larger eye. So threads that break and shred, yeah, it happens to us all, but the solution is simple. Just move up a needle size or change to a different needle type with a larger eye. So I hope I've solved a little situation we frequently encounter. Next, let's talk about um, the Smets color chart. I hope you've noticed that your Smets needles um, have either one or two bands of color. The Smets color bands, the two bands were instituted in 2014. So you can kind of date some of your needles just by the color bands. So let's make sure you understand the chart. On the left-hand side, you see the column is labeled needle type. So on many of the needle types, there's a, um, a color assigned. On the right-hand side of the chart, labeled needle size, you'll see each size is assigned a color. Now look between the two columns at the needle and you'll see two bands of color on the shoulder. The top color band identifies the needle type. So what kind of needle is this? We see yellow is the top color band. So we look off to the left and we find yellow is a stretch needle. The lower color band identifies the needle size. So we look off to the um, right-hand side and we see rose is a size 7511. So this is a stretch size 7511 needle. But let me give you a couple more examples. My favorite go-to needle for all kinds of fashion sewing, piecing, quilting, etc., is a Microtex size 8012 needle. So what color would the color bands be? 
So for needle type, we look off to the left and we find microtex is purple. For size 8012, we look off to the right and we find orange is size 8012. So microtex size 8012 will have a top color band of purple and a lower color band of orange. One more example would be, what if I have two bands of, of orange? What kind of needle would that be and what size? We look off to the left and we find orange is jersey. We look off to the right and we find um, orange is size 8012. So two bands of orange would be a jersey size 8012. Now, one more thing I need to point out about the chart is look at the under needle type and the very first um, needle type listed is universal. And the color block is actually X'd out. So what does that mean? Universal needles will have only one band of color and that's to identify the needle size. So if you have a universal size 8012 needle, you have just a single band of orange. If you have a universal size 9014, you have just a single band of blue. So I hope that helps you identify your Smets needles, especially after you take them out of the needle pack. Okay. So Margaret, I think that answers your question. What if you've only got one color? Well, that's probably a universal needle. And you look at that uh, one color, which will identify the needle size. All right, now I wanna make sure you're comfortable reading all those numbers on the needle pack. So at the very bottom of your needle pack, you find the needle size. On this sample here, we've got assorted sizes. We have sizes 7010, 8012, and 9014. I think most everyone is familiar with uh, finding the needle size. But how many of you have looked above the needle size and you've seen that series of numbers, 130 705 H, and wondered, huh, what the heck does that mean? <laughs> It looks important. I don't know what it means, but I'm going to buy these needles anyway and keep my fingers crossed that they work. <laughs> 130 705 H is your needle system. What that means is 130 705 means that the needle has a flat shank. The H translates from a German word that means scarf. So needle system 130705H is a flat shank needle with a scarf that 99% of all of our home sewing machines require. A flat shank needle with a scarf. So don't let those numbers trip you up. It's just um, uh, the needle system that says, hey, these have a flat shank and a scarf and you can use these in your home sewing machine. Above the needle system, you've got the needle type spelled out. Above that, you've got the SMETS name. And because of the clear packaging, you can see the color bands. Well, we know now that universal needles have only one band of color. So on the two needles on the left-hand side, we see green bands. So we know that these are universal size 7010. The next two needles to the right have orange bands. So we know these are universal size 8012 needles. And the needle to the far right has that single blue band. So we know that's a universal size 9014. So lots of information on this little two inch piece of, um, of plastic. But let's just look at one other sample um, to make sure you're comfortable with all of these numbers. So working from the bottom up, again, at the very bottom of your needle package, you find the needle size. This is a size 9014. Above that, we find the needle system 130-705H. So we know that these needles have a flat shank and a scarf and we can use them in our home sewing machines. 
But look a little bit closer at that needle system line and you find a dash E. Dash E for embroidery. On some of your other needle packs, you'll find dash Q for quilting or J for jeans or M for microtex, etc. So lots of important information on your needle system line. Above that, you've got the needle type spelled out. So these are embroidery needles. And even um, today, above the needle type spelled out, even today, sometimes you'll find the German word for needle. You've got the Smets name above that. And again, because of the clear packaging, you can see the color bands. So on these needles here, the top color band is red, red for embroidery. And the lower color band is blue for size 9014. So I hope this helps remove some of the mystery about um, your sewing machine needles and how to read the needle pack. Okay, so Margaret is asking for me to explain the needle system again. So what, you know what? So let me just um, stop my share here. So 130 slash 705H. Needle system 130705H is referring to the flat shank. It means the needle has a flat shank for perfect positioning into our home sewing machine. The H translates from the German word that means scarf. This little indentation above the eye on the back of the needle, the scarf that allows the bobbin hook in, to catch that top thread in order to create the stitch. So, so why is the needle system so important? Because now when you go into your store, sometimes you'll find other needle systems mm -hmm. because you can buy needles for long arm machines or maybe some um, industrial machines and they use different needle systems. Examples would be um, needle system 206X13 or a 134R or a 135X17. There's over 7,000 different needle systems throughout the world. So hello, we can be really happy that our home sewing machines require the one needle system, 13705H which means the needle has a flat shank and a scarf for our home sewing machines. So, so, so good Rosa, question. can yes. I ask you a question? Um, so if you have a different brand of sewing machine, does that mean you'll need a different system of needle? You know what? The Smets engineers work with all the different sewing machine manufacturers around the world. So in fact, up on our um, Smets Needles blog today, um, it, the question is, uh, the blog post, will Smets Needles work with my brand of sewing machine? And the answer is yes. Smets works with the engineers of Bernina, Babylock, Singer, um, Juki, White, Husqvarna Viking, Foff, and all those different sewing machine companies. So yes, we're very fortunate that that one needle system, 13705H, works with all these different sewing machine manufacturers. Now, I'll, I will just add that every once in a while, there'll be um, a specific um, model of machine that might use a different uh, needle system. But that is clearly um, identified in the owner's manuals. But 99% of all of our home sewing machines use the same needle system. So yes, good question, Margaret. Thank you. Okay, any other questions about the eyes, the color chart, or how to read the needle pack? I am going to scoot ahead and talk about some specific needles. And first I wanna ask, what do you think the most popular needle type is? And I bet most of you can guess. The most popular needle type is the universal needle. The universal needle is the workhorse of all needle types. It has a slightly rounded point 
So it works wonderful with both woven and knit fabrics. The universal needle is also available in the widest assortment of sizes. So universal needle size 80 is the most popular needle size, followed by universal size 9014. So I always suggest that you have those needles in your stash, universal size 80 and 90. Okay, well, let's talk about um, piecing and quilting. So five popular needle types for piecing and quilting. And you know what? Universal is definitely one of the top five needles. Lots of famous quilters use the universal needle for both piecing and for quilting. But I always like to say with snaps, you have options. So let's look at some other options for piecing and for quilting. First, I have the jeans needle, also known as a denim needle. And you might be thinking, really? <laughs> a jeans needle for piecing and quilting? Well, yes, you know what? Lots of people like to make quilts out of jeans. They like to make flannel quilts and they like to make those heavy duty raggy quilts. You're going through a lot of heavy fabrics when you make those things. And the jeans needle is up to the task. So what's so special about the jeans needle? The jeans needle has a reinforced blade, a reinforced blade so that when the needle passes through your fabric and your throat plate, there's less needle deflection, less movement of the needle. So you'll get a cleaner stitch with the reinforced blade of the jeans needle. Another popular needle type for piecing and quilting is the top stitch needle. The top stitch needle. And as we saw earlier, the top stitch needle has that elongated eye. So there's less stress on the thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle, the top stitch needle. Another needle type is, just as the name suggests, the quilting needle was specifically designed for piecing and for quilting. What's so special about the quilting needle? Well, it's all about the taper. It's a special taper specifically designed for piecing and quilting, a special taper. You'd probably use the um, size 7511 for the actual piecing of your project and the size 9014 for the quilting of your project. The quilting needle has a slightly rounded point. And that leaves one more needle type popular for piecing and quilting. Can you guess what it is? <laughs> it's my favorite go-to needle. <laughs> Maybe it's yours too. And that's the Microtex needle, the Smets Microtex needle. Now the generic name for a Smets Microtex needle is a sharp needle, a sharp needle. So what's so special about the Microtex? It has what's referred to as a very slim acute point very slim acute point. So with the Microtex needle, you're going to get the most precise stitches with that very slim acute point. And because the Microtex has a very slim acute point, guess what? It's going to dull quicker than any of your other needle types. So you will need to change the Microtex needle more frequently than any of your other needle types. I'll just also mention that if, you, um, if you're piecing or quilting with batiks, and don't we love batiks, <laughs> that the Microtex is a great needle choice because when you're working with batiks, they're oftentimes um, over dyed and very tightly woven, right? And even when you pre-wash your batiks, they're still tight and they're still dye residue but the Microtex can pierce right through those fabrics beautifully for beautiful stitches. So use the Microtex also for um, your fatigues. So let me just do a quick review if you're taking notes. Uh, five popular needle types for piecing and for quilting. We've got um, the workhorse of all needle types, the universal needle with a slightly rounded point. 
We have the jeans needle with that reinforced blade, a great needle choice if you're making a jeans quilt, a flannel quilt, or a heavy duty raggy quilt. We have the top stitch needle, which also has a slightly rounded point, but the top stitch needle has that elongated eye. So there's less stress on the thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. We have the quilting needle specifically designed for piecing and for quilting. It has that special taper. And finally, we have the Microtex needle, also known as a sharp needle. The Microtex has that very slim acute point um, so you get really clean, precise uh, stitches. So five needle types. Now, Margaret already teased you that she's got some bundles. So you're gonna wanna stay through the entire um, class tonight. So you can get a discount uh, code to buy these specific needles. Um, the bundle also comes with um, a little luggage tag a laminated plastic luggage tag. And you know what, I used to travel with these all the time. You can put um, your uh, sticky label on the back, or you know what, if you're not traveling, just attach it to your sewing machine or pin it to a bulletin board. So you've got the color chart handy. The um, needles also come with the Handy Smets ABC pocket guide, which is actually the foundation to tonight's class. So stay tuned because Margaret will have um, a special code for you. Now, I want to um, talk about um, sewing with knits. If you haven't sewn with knits in a while, I encourage you to do that. Um, I learned, um, when I first learned to sew, it was with double polyester. Remember those days? Well, knits have come up a long, long way, and they're wonderful to work with. And we have such a wonderful selection of knits to work with now. But part of the success of working uh, with knits is using the appropriate needle. So there are two needle types that you must have when you're sewing with knits. Um, the first is um, a jersey needle, also known as a ballpoint needle. So the Jersey needle has a medium ball point. The other needle type that you need is a stretch needle. And guess what? The stretch needle also has a medium ball point, but the stretch needle has a narrower eye and a deeper scarf. And those two differences make a world of difference in how the needle creates the stitch with your thread, your fabric, and your machine. So um, the stretch needle is a great needle choice when you're working with your knit fabrics that have lycra, spandex, and elastic. So, um, yep. So we've got um, the stretch needles in two sizes, 7511 and the 9014. So I got the two packs here. And then we've got a special pack here called fleece needles. And this is the same stretch needle, but there's two um, sizes in this pack, both 7511 and the 9014. Now you might be wondering, hmm, why are you calling these fleece needles? Well, we have a whole series of needles that are project driven. And this one here is all about fleece. And when you're working with a polar fleece, when you're working with um, minky or cuddle fabric, what needle do you use? Yeah, you wanna use the stretch size 9014, stretch size 9014. So even Shannon Fabrics that manufactures cuddle fabrics and minky, they suggest uh, stretch by Smith size 9014. So um, I'll have to tell you that if um, I was giving this class in the fall or winter time, I'd probably be wearing um, a cuddle vest or a jacket that I made because I love sewing with um, cuddle fabric. It's a little messy. I always have to vacuum, <laughs> but it's so worth it. When I wear, um, you know, plush cuddle fabric uh, vests and jackets, you know, it makes me the most huggable person in the, in the room. So. 
you can do that too, but you want that stretch needle size um, 9014. So Margaret does have these also already bundled up for you tonight at a special price. So three packs of needles of the stretch in both sizes, 7511. You'll get the um, handy little luggage tag with the color chart and also the Smets ABC pocket guide. So stay tuned for that um, special code. Now, needles don't really change that much, but about two years ago, we came out with a new needle. A new needle, yes, maybe you've even tried it. Um, the Stret, the um, Smets Super Nonstick Needle. How many of you have tried this needle? I know Margaret loves this needle and she sells them by this, the single packs. So what's so special about these needles? Oh, there's such a glare here. There we go. I think even virtually you can see that these needles are a different color, right? They're kind of a gunmetal color or charcoal gray. And that's the nonstick surface. These needles also have two other features. The blade is reinforced, so there's less needle deflection when your stitch is made, and the eye is extra large. So when are you going to use these special needles, the super nonstick? Well, how many of you like to do machine embroidery? Or how many of you like to do machine applique? And when you do those two techniques, frequently you're working with sticky stabilizers or fusibles, right? And what happens when you uh, are, are working with those sticky things? Yeah, they have a tendency to gum up your needle. So the Smet Super Nonstick Needle, I can't use that T word, but you know, it's like that, um, our pots and pans in the kitchen, that same type of thing, um, but it's a nonstick surface. And so it resists all the gooiness and the stabilizers from your um, sticky stabilizers. So again, to use the super nonstick needle, use it for machine embroidery, machine applique. Other uses would be if you're sewing on oil cloth, splash fabric, uh, vinyl, uh, because what happens when you sew on vinyl? The vinyl gets warm and then the vinyl starts to hug your needle and then you can't see where you're sewing. <laughs> so the super nonstick will uh, resist the vinyl from hugging your needle. Also, if you um, are working with hoop and loop tape, you know, that's kind of a sticky, finicky product, but the super nonstick works beautifully with that. So anytime you're working with sticky stabilizers, fusible spray adhesives, um, use the super nonstick. So four sizes available, sizes 70, 80, 90, and 100. And I know Margaret has these by the single cards. Okay, so we have just covered a lot of different um, needles. <laughs> Margaret's saying she's going to have to get some more, some more needles. Yes, you bet. Oh, Brenda, I like your idea. Yes, you could use the um, super nonstick when you're making um, hot pads because you're working with that thermal product and that too has a tendency to um, kind of hug your needle. So the super nonstick would be a, a great use of, of that too. Okay. Um, oh, let me go through here. Okay, so is that you, Margaret? Margaret is asking about pro needles. Okay, so I know Margaret carries the Smets pro needles. So let me just pull these out real quick. So we introduced chrome needles in the North American uh, marketplace only in 2019. And you can find these up on Margaret's website. Uh, they're very easily identifiable because they're on the most colorful cards. Uh, you can identify the Smets chrome because the cards are color coded. This top um, triangle identifies the needle type, just like the top color band of your needle. So this is purple for Microtex, and the lower corner identifies your needle size. So this is a seafoam green, so we know that these are size 60. Um, 
Microtex was the only one that had that came in chrome in in three different sizes, 60, 70, and size 80, orange for size 80. So yes, these are wonderful. We love chrome needles. And what's so special about chrome? Chrome resists heat and chrome resists wear. It's a high performance needle. You know, it used to be that our sewing machines would sew 400, 600 stitches a minute. And now how fast do our new machines go? Yeah, they're going 1,000, 1,200, 1,600 stitches per minute. Those needles are working hard and they're taking a beating. So you need a special finish. And in this instance, it's chrome to handle the heat and the wear of the sewing that we're doing. So I do have big news. And Margaret, I don't know if you know this or not. We announced it in May, um, but Chrome has been so popular that in January of this year, we decided to um, uh, uh, wow, we decided to transition all of our needles to Chrome. So moving forward, by the end of the year, all of our needles will be chrome. I had so, not heard that, but I know yeah. how much longer they last. Yes, yes. And, and the reason I asked about the chrome is because you mentioned how the Microtex doll faster, but if we get the chrome ones, they last longer. Well, they will last longer, but you know what? The point is still going to get dull. <laughs> oh no, I didn't suspect that it wouldn't, but I tell yes. people, all the time. It's like a pencil point. You're going into something repeatedly. It's going to get dull. Yes. Oh, I like that analogy. I'm going to use that. So it's like a pencil. You can sharpen it. It's sharp, but you keep using it and it's going to dull down. So same way with needles. The more you use it, it's just going to get dull. So chrome will resist the heat and wear of when, you know, the needle passes through your fabric, but it still will get dull, but you'll probably get a little bit more sewing time from your chrome needles. So if you've bought, um, let's say, universal needles just in the last month or two, guess what? You're pro you probably bought some chrome needles and you didn't even know it. Wow because you can't really tell visually that the needles are chrome. Um, the packaging of our needles will probably change next year, uh, but right now, um, even when you buy a regular universal needle and before the end of the year, all of the needles will be chrome. So I don't know what the packaging is going to be looking like, but I got a whole campaign. I am going for color-coded <laughs> uh, color -coded car hang cards. So we'll see how that all, all works out. Um, so yes, Chrome, wonderful. All right, let me see. Oh, um, all right. So um, there's a question about 7511 rather than 8012. Let me give you um, let me give you my rule of thumb on um, needle size. What needle size to use? Um, for my everyday sewing, I generally use a forty weight thread. Doesn't matter what the brand is. Lots of fantastic brands out there. Forty weight thread, and with forty weight thread, I usually use a size eighty twelve needle. That's my benchmark. So if I go to use a finer thread, something finer than a 40 weight, then I know that I need to downsize my needle. So I might go down to a 7511 or a 7010. Um, or if I'm using one of those micro threads that became so popular last year, then I know I need um, probably a size 60 or 65 um, for those micro threads. So again, using my benchmark of a 40 weight thread, I use an 8012 needle. So now I know if I'm going to use a heavier weight thread, 
that I need something, I need a needle larger than an 8012. So I'm going to move up to at least a 9014 or maybe even um, a 100 slash 16. So sometimes you just have to experiment, but I find the benchmark of a 40 weight thread with an 8012 um, needle works, works for me. Um, so you can keep that in mind for your own um, sewing purposes. So uh, Winola is asking what needle to use when sewing on cork. Good question. So for cork, I would um, probably try the um, Smet Super Nonstick Needle. I probably, depending on the weight of the cork, I would go as small as possible. So cork, um, oh, this is a size 80. I would probably use a size 70, 10. Just because the eye is extra large, I would want to um, use the smallest needle um, also with the smaller, as small as eye as possible. So I'd probably use the 7010. Um, another option would be um, a Microtex needle. So those would be the um, two options um, for, for cork. Um, okay. So Rhonda, I, yeah. asked our, I asked our people watching, how often do they change their needles? And I gave them three choices. Okay. And so they picked 12% or excuse me, 17% picked after 25 or more hours of sewing. Okay. The next group was um, when I remember, and that was also 17%. And then the last group, which was our bigger group. And I will have to tell you, I, I kind of get after everybody about this. So they may have remembered um, <laughs> that they changed their needles after six to eight hours. Oh, and, wonderful. And, and so would, could you just take a tiny bit of time and, and let them know why that's so important? You know what? That's the perfect segue for my next section. So let me share my screen right here. Let's see. Oh, here we go. So that is the mystery question. How long will needles last? And you know what? I don't know. I don't know the answer, except I know that needles do not last forever. So you do need to change your needle. So you should never wait for your needles to look like this. These are just downright nasty looking needles. They look like they have little mountain peaks. <laughs> the needle on the right hand side looks like it has a cutting point. So what are these, these needles going to do to your fabric? Yeah, they're just going to eat up your fabric. They're going to um, bunch it up. They're going to tear up your, your fabric. So you need to remember to change your needle. So the needle is actually a part that you can change yourself. You don't have to wait to go to your technician to change the needle. All you have to do is use your fingers or maybe a little screwdriver to loosen that screw or, and tighten, or maybe you have a little lever that you move up and down to um, change out the needle. So the needle is not a permanent machine part and you're in charge of changing it. Now, I love this image right here because the image on the left-hand side looks like a sharp needle, right? But it's been used. This is a used needle and to the naked eye, it looks sharp. But you can see as you move to the right, the progression of, of this needle, it's been magnified. So this is the same needle in each uh, photo, but um, in the right-hand side, you can see how dull it is. You can see that super burr on the top and look at all those striations and burrs on the point and tip just nasty. It's just going to rip up your fabrics and your thread. So you can't always tell with your naked eye whether or not your needle um, is ready to be changed out. So needles do get dull with use. So when you're, so I think rather than um, just asking um, how much sewing time you get out of, of, out of a needle, um, you know, I've never timed myself. Does anybody time yourself <laughs> when they're sewing with a needle? I think you could reframe that question as to um, 
what are the clues to changing the needle? What are the clues so you know when to change the needle? When you're sewing, what are the clues to change the needle? So let's, let's think about that. So we kind of touched upon one clue already, and that's when your threads are breaking and shredding. That's a clue that you need to change the, the needle. If you don't change the needle out frequently enough, the thread will actually wear a groove in the eye of the needle. And that's not a good thing. That's going to break and shred your, your thread. So what do you do? Yeah, get rid of the needle and use a new needle. What's happening to your fabric when you're sewing? Is it kind of puckering? Is it getting kind of tucked down into the throat plate? Um, is the fabric being snagged as you create stitches? Those are clues that you need to change the needle. And what about your stitch quality? Are your stitches even? Um, are the stitches skipping? And um, maybe you're sitting at your sewing machine and you're saying, well, Rhonda, I'm sewing in a straight line. Why do my stitches look kind of wiggly squiggly? Well, you know what? That's your needle saying, hello, <laughs> I'm tired here. You wore me out and I need to go. Replace me, replace me with a new needle. There's one other clue um, as to when to change your needle, and that's when your machines are talking to you. That's right, your machines will talk to you. Hopefully when you're sewing, you're in a, a bubble, right? You've pushed all of the world's problems beyond that bubble and you're just humming along sewing. And then you start to hear that little click, click, clicking sound. And that's your needle saying, hello, I'm working hard here, change me. If you ignore the clicking sound, now it graduates to a pop, pop, popping sound. And it's saying, you know, I gave you a clue and now you really do need to change the needle. If you ignore the clicking and the popping, now your machine is going clunk, 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 clunk. <laughs> and what's your first tendency? Your first thought is, oh my gosh, something's wrong with my machine. But even if you took your machine into the technician, what's the first thing the tech is going to ask you? When's the last time you changed your needle? A little two inch piece of steel can really solve some huge problems. And when you think that that little two inch piece of steel, you've only paid a couple dollars for a, a needle, wow. Wow, how important is the needle? And if you think about all the money that you've spent on your wonderful sewing machines, doesn't matter if you spent $100 on your machine or thousands of dollars on your machine, it comes right down to the needle creating the stitch. So you wanna maintain that quality that you've um, invested in your machine the high quality of the fabrics that you've, per that you've searched for and purchased, of the beautiful threads that you found, of the books and magazines and the classes that you have taken. So it just makes sense to uh, keep using a new needle, a fresh needle. So the question is, how long does a needle last? I don't know. If you use a new needle and right away you sew on, on and hit a pin, maybe you've sewn for three seconds and you ruined the needle. It might be kind of bent or it, it's now got um, burrs on it. Maybe if you're a gentle sewer and you're working on something more fragile, um, maybe you can get 20 hours of sewing. I don't know, three seconds to 20 hours. So we'll just average it out to eight hours of sewing time. But I have power quilters come up and say, really, Rhonda, eight hours of sewing time? Forget it. I change my needle every four to five hours because I'm aware of the clues to change the needle. 
those quilters, they're aware of the stitch quality as it's being made. They're aware of, they're in tune with how the machine um, sounds when the actual stitch is being made. So rather than uh, worrying about um, how much uh, sewing time you've gotten out of your um, needle, remember the clues to change the needle. Your threads are breaking or shredding, your stitches are uneven, they might be skipping, your stitches are kind of wiggly squiggly, your fabric might be um, kind of puckered, you might be snagging your fabric or the fabric might be talking into your throat plate or um, your machine is talking to you. Clicking, popping, clunking, your machine is talking to you. So um, eight hours of sewing time is a good um, average, but be aware of the clues to change the needle. You might need to change it a little bit more or a little bit less. So yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay, so let's see who, okay, this is Margaret. Um, and she's saying that changing the needle is the least expensive part to change. And it's something that you can do yourself even at two o'clock in the morning. Well. You can at two o'clock in the morning if you've got a stash. <laughs> um, yes, the needle will sound like a punching sound when you need to, to change the needle and it can leave holes in, in your fabric. So very good. Okay, well, that was, um, that was wonderful. That was a good segue, Margaret, asking about um, when to change the needles. Let me see. Um, Oh, Denise has a question here. Would you share some info on the manufacturing of Smets needles and how or why they're better than others? Okay, so in 2012, I actually visited the Smets factory in Germany. At that time, they were still making some specialty needles in, in Germany. And it was really interesting because in Germany, um, it was a campus. It was a campus that dates back to the turn of the last century. So they had the uh, factory facilities, they had housing for employees, they had stores and restaurants or cafes, et cetera, right there on the Smets campus. Um, probably 20 years ago, about 20 years ago, um, Smets actually built a factory in um, India. So now all of the needles, all the Smets needles are made in India. So for about 20 years now, they've been made in um, the factory that they engineered and built and designed in India. So um, those are Smets employees that work there. And um, it takes, Margaret, do you wanna guess how long it takes to make a needle? This is your trivia question of the evening. <laughs> Okay, well, think about it. I bet you're gonna be surprised how long it takes to make a needle. Um, it takes about 12 weeks to make a Smets needle. And that's from the time that they bring the German steel in, in coils, coils about the size of a wreath that you might put on your door um, during the holiday season. The uh, wire is straightened and then cut to um, about two inch pieces, the, the size of a Smets needle. Then the, um, the steel is softened and they, um, they actually, it was in 1923, Smets was the first needle manufacturer that actually created a master dye, a master dye that's applied to the soft steel of the needle um, to create the eye. So the eye of every needle is the same. So they can get thousands of eyes out of just one master dye that's applied to the steel. So when the eye is created and the dye is pressed into the steel, then excess steel uh, oozes out beyond that dye and it's called, they're called wings. So if you're familiar with a wing needle or a hemstitch needle, that would be what the um, excess steel looks like, except that it's just uh, refined a little bit more for that hemstitch needle. For all the other needles, 
those wings are ground down. They're ground down so that we've got a nice smooth um, needle. The, um, the, um, the mill, the, the groove is milled and then there's tempering. The needles go into high heat ovens where they remove carbon dioxide. I'm not a scientist, but it sounds impressive, right? <laughs> they, um, so high heat ovens, and then the needles go into um, a deep freeze um, container. So lots of science that goes into the making of a SMET needle. So there's actually over 30 steps that go into the production of a SMET needle. And along the way, there are over 70 quality control steps. And most of those quality control steps are electromagnetic. So, um, you know, highly technical. But at the end of the needle production, and I did see this when I was there, um, they have a special room set up uh, with black top tables and then black sides of the table come up and then fluorescent lights. So even at the end of the production of Smets needles, um, quality control receives a whole bundle of 1,000 needles. And those are laid out on the table and they take their little finger and they'll uh, do a manual random check for quality control of, of the needles. So when you get your Smets needle at home, you know, it is sewing worthy. It is sewing, um, sewing re uh, ready. So Smats has been making needles since 1851. And wow, it's a legacy company. <laughs> in fact, I published Smats Inspired to Sew. And in our next issue, oh, this is just a little heads up. Our next issue, which is coming out um, at the end of the month, it's about... Um, three legacy companies in the sewing industry, and certainly Smets is one of those. So the quality control uh, really um, makes the Smets, uh, Smets the best, the best needle. Plus we have great education and um, uh, the educational materials to support the different needle types. So, so good question. The other question that Denise is asking is chrome versus gold versus titanium. Why would you choose one over the other? And I always like to say with Smets, you have choices. So um, let me see. Let me just talk about embroidery needles um, a little bit because here you can see we've got our regular, um, our regular needle which um, is a nickel and soon to be uh, a chrome needle. And then we've got the Smets gold needle, which is the, the only titanium needle that Smets currently makes for our home sewing machines. Just another choice, you know, our machines have um, personalities along with our fabrics and our threads. So sometimes titanium just works better um, or uh, you just like that option over, over chrome. So there's not just one um, needle type better than the other. These are great needle choices and you get to choose. Both chrome and uh, titanium uh, resist heat and wear. Um, and the, the um, titanium also helps to keep the needle cooler. So it's not really chrome versus titanium as much as it is um, just options and finding what you like best. So good question. Let me see if there are any more questions here. Okay, let's see. Mm, okay, so let me, I have just a couple more slides and um, then I'll just wrap this up because, wow, I've been talking for almost an hour now. <laughs> so um, I wanted to let you know that there's an app. There's a free app. Um, just go to Google Play or to the iStore and type in Smets, S-C-H-M-E-T-Z, and um, the images that I've shown you here tonight, you'll find in the free app. 
Plus the app is, um, has a list of over 80 different fabrics. So you can click a fabric and it'll suggest what needle type and size to use. So this is an Android screenshot and chambray was clicked. So it's saying to use a universal size 8012 or a 9014 needle. Um, at the same time, um, a picture of the actual carded needle will pop up along with all the features of a universal needle, including all the different sizes that are available. So our app has been available for about six years now. And you know, technology changes so quickly. I have to say the app is looking a little tired these days, but you know what? Needles don't really change that much. So the information is still solid. Our goal is to update the app. It was, we were to update it before the end of the year, but you know what? It's September already and I don't think it's gonna happen. So I'm gonna say we're gonna update it next year. So stay tuned for that. So you'll find lots of useful information um, in the free app. Uh, my name is Rhonda Pierce and I, rep <clears throat> I represent Smets Needles in North America. If you're curious as to what kind of sewing and quilting I like to do, I do have a personal blog. I'm not selling anything, but I do document um, my sewing projects at sewmorestitches.com. So just click the blog. Um, I only post about three times a week and you might actually want to click 2020 sewing or 2021 sewing to see what I finished um, uh, in, in the pandemic, because I finished some long-term UFOs in the last, um, uh, the last two years. So, okay. Um, the other thing I'll just mention is that um, the Smets ABC pocket guide that comes with the bundles has um, the diagrams that you saw here tonight, including this diagram about the eyes of the needle. So you don't have to remember that the top stitch metallic and embroidery needles have larger eyes. Um, right here on page three is how to read the needle package. So do you remember what 130705H means? Yeah, that's a flat shank needle with a scarf. That's the needle system that our home sewing machines require. Then we photographed all the different needle types. Again, we tell you what sizes um, the needle comes in, the color coding, special uses, special features, et cetera. And also right here in the little um, Smets ABC pocket guide, we have an alphabetical listing of what needles to use with what fabric. So that goes on for about 12 pages or so. The um, Smets color chart is in here also, so you don't have to remember. And then most importantly, hello, clues to change the needle. <laughs> so I hope you remember the, those clues to change the needle. So they're right here written out for you. So this is the foundation to the free Smets app too, but you want to get your hands on this little ABC pocket guide. I know Margaret has these. I know she gives these out in her owner's classes and you want it. Uh, it's certainly cute, but more importantly, it's full of information that you can understand and um, refer to. Okay, let me see. Um, all right, Margaret, what other um, questions do you have? Okay, so I want to, number one, let anyone know that when you buy anything, even if you're online, if you want one of these little books, the Schmetz needles included, Schmetz has given us a lot of them and we always get more. Um, we make sure we have them on hand all the time. And so if you're, misplaced yours, you're ordering online, you're ordering anything. If you want this to be included in your order, just ask. It's not, it does not cost you anything. It's free. Um, I so believe in keeping fresh needles in our machines and causing us less trouble. Um, I always tell people one little story about having one of my employees, they made a knit dress for me one time. Um, and when I picked it up and I held it up and I looked at it, I noticed that all the way down every seam, there was <laughs> holes, 
holes down every single seam. That dress was completely ruined. The fabric had to be thrown away um, because I wasn't going to get any littler at that point in my life. And I was pretty little then, and I'm not now, but I was then. And um, it was just a situation of a dull needle. She really did not, I mean, she was a young person. She was just learning. Um, she didn't do anything else wrong. She just she used a bad needle. And so oftentimes we go along and we think, uh, I mean, I've heard, I heard one story from Bernina where they talked about the woman who, um, this was to some dealer. We never heard what dealer it was, but the dealer changed out the needle and the woman came in and she just was so upset because it was the needle that came with the sewing machine. And she couldn't believe that they had gotten rid of her first needle. And so all I can tell you is the first, anyone who buys a machine from us, they, they always get the needle, the needle discussion. And whenever we do beginning classes, we do it. Um, but it's because over the years, I've had a few experiences that were painful. The dress story, a few other things I could tell you about. And um, I also do a thread story. Um, the thread story involves a pair of pants that were made for my ex-husband that literally, as soon as he sat down, completely came apart because they were constructed with serger thread. So <laughs> we've got a few stories around here to tell. And um, I was so excited when I talked to Rhonda and I found out she could participate with us and do this. Um, and they gave us some really good deals on a couple of bundles of needles. One is our quilting and um, a quilting and uh, piecing bundle. And then the other one is going to be a stretch needle bundle. And I'm gonna go switch um, at, and share my screen here for just a moment. If I can figure out how to do this, I'm trying to be smarter than the computer. Um, let's see if I can do this. I think that I've got the right thing and hopefully I'm showing you. Oh no, of course not. So give me one second. I'm getting there. Um, oh wow. This is kind of curious because I had the screen up here and now it appears to have disappeared on me. Where did you guys go? Let's see if I can get that back up. We're just going to pull up the University of Sewing. This is what you guys see when you see our uh, online shop. And there's their shop, but all you have to do is in the search engine is put in Schmetz. And when you do that, then all the different Schmetz things come up. But right now you'll see that there is a Schmetz needle. Um, oh, that's the class, excuse me, don't do that one. So here's one, it says Schmetz needle bundle stretch. And then there's another one. Oh, where did it go? I lost it. Let's see. Ah, no, I, I, I will find it here. Ah, there it is. Schmidt's Needle Piecing and Quilting Bundle. Uh, hopefully that all made sense. But there's just, if you put in Schmidt's, but you see we have all these different Schmidt's needles here. Now these two bundles are at very, very good prices. But I want you to go back and look for a moment. I'm going to go back and we're going to stop sharing for a minute. We're going to just go back to the screen. Oh, goodness. I'm going to have to learn how to do this better. Stop share. That's when I needed to hit here. Ah, there we're back. Um, <laughs> the other thing that we have offering you right now is we are having a very special discount code for you folks. It is a percentage code, 20% off. That is a very nice little treat for you guys. That is off of anything on our site. Not mm. just the needles, not just the stretch fabric, not the clothing, everything. So to get that percentage off, I have turned on this and it is available to you until the end of the month. And that is going to be the word, the code you need to use is called new needle. And I'm going to put it in the chat here right now so that you can see what I'm talking about. It's just new needle. It's all one word. I didn't make it two words. 
It's in the chat right now. Take a look at that. And make sure you copy it down. That's your special discount code for participating tonight. Now, don't forget, if you want one of those booklets, some of you who are watching, I know you've already got them. If you don't want another one, I don't want to send you another one. But if you want one and you want to give it to a girlfriend or you want to give it to one of your other sewing friends or somebody you don't even like, I don't care. <laughs> so go ahead and ask us for one, please, because I've got plenty. I just don't want you to think you can't ask for one. Please do go ahead. Yep, Denise has one. We give them out. We give them out all the time here. Whenever anybody comes in the shop, I don't care if they even buy anything. I hand them a Schmetz needle book because I don't want people to have bad experiences with their projects. I want them to have good experiences. We want everybody to love sewing as much as we do. So we're all about all things sewing. That's our thing. And we're so grateful to you, Rhonda. You came in tonight. It, I don't know what time. Oh, you're in Chicago. So you're I'm in Chicago. So you're at eight. It's eight eighteen there for you. And yeah, eight, lucky me. Oh. Hey, Margaret. You know what? There's one more thing that we didn't oh. talk about, and know? that's the um, oh, Jumbo yeah. Bob and Saver Square. So many of you um, are probably familiar with the magnetic gravit um, pin cushions. And I liked these pin cushions so much. I said, we got to buy this company. <laughs> so we bought the Gravit Sewing Tool Company about, I don't know, six or seven years. Limoncello yellow is my favorite color and the most recent color. But one of the other products that um, they had was the Round Bobbin Saver, which held about uh, 20 bobbins. But from my travels, people would say, Oh, Rhonda, I love the, the bobbin saver, but I wish you had something that was more efficient with space. So I came up with the bobbin saver square. And the one I'm showing you here tonight is the jumbo bobbin saver square. Because Bernina's now use a lot of the jumbo bobbins. So these channels here will accommodate the jumbo bobbins that Bernina uses. And you can um, store or organize about 60 some bobbins um, right here in your bobbin, um, bobbin saver square. They can be plastic, they can be metal, um, but it's a nice way to keep them organized. Just set it on your, um, uh, slide into a drawer, or, um, you know, if the cat comes by <laughs> and swats this on the floor, your bobbins aren't going to fly out because um, this plastic, the special plastic just hugs your bobbins nice and, and snug. So you'll want to check that out too. So I want to encourage each of you to support um, Margaret at the Tailored Fit and University of Sewing. You know, Gosh, I wish I lived in your neighborhood so I could uh, be a customer of Margaret's. Such wonderful programs and wonderful machines and staff. And let me tell you, not every community is as lucky. So you need to help her stay in business and to expand. And you need to buy your Smith's needles from her along with all your fabrics and your classes, et cetera. And I must say, the discount that you're giving tonight, Margaret, is fabulous. So I hope everyone takes advantage of that. Well, I'm very grateful for our customers. We, I've always tell my employees, when they first start working for us, the very first thing I tell them is we are extraordinarily fortunate. We have the most lovely customers ever. And it's very rare that we have someone that, that we can even go, hmm. <laughs> it's, our customers are lovely, lovely people and we are Wonderful. very grateful for all of them. And so when I get something like this to put together and I can get a nice response like we have this evening, I want them to know they're appreciated. And so that's what the discounts for is it's our appreciation of what they do for us. Um, they've, they've made the last two years a true joy when it could have been a real disaster. And I just want them to know they are very appreciated and we love them dearly. 
Um, and we think about them all the time. And and anytime we get to see them, we're really happy about it right now. So Right, right. Well, you know what? I want to thank everyone for being here tonight. You know, can you believe you just sat in on a talk about sewing machine needles, two inches of steel? I realize that needles aren't glamorous, they're not sexy, and they're not romantic. But you know what? You can't use your machines without a Smets needle. So thank you for using Smets, and thank you for shopping with Margaret. So stay healthy, everyone, and keep on sewing and sew Smets. <laughs> okay, everyone, just to reiterate, new needle until September the 30th. Go ahead and use that and make sure that um, you get a chance and opportunity. I didn't want you to be on a super tight deadline, but I also can't offer forever. So um, I don't also, I don't think we mentioned on those bundles, you're going to get that luggage tag with each bundle. Um, so I want to make sure that you knew you were going to get that. And we've got a few extras and guess what's going to happen with those? Those are going to be part of Facebook Live. <laughs> so... And by the way, we've recorded this. And Rhonda, I, I, is it okay if we use this recording? Absolutely. Reuse it. Reuse okay. it. We're going to do that because I want to make sure everybody gets an opportunity to see this. I think it's so incredibly vital. Everyone, go take and get some rest this evening. I'm going to head home. I'm exhausted. <laughs> so, Rhonda, you at least get to go home in the next room. So that's right. good. <laughs> so, Everybody have a wonderful evening. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to send us an email at info at universityofsewing.com or call us. You've got all of our phone numbers, universityofsewing.com. Have a wonderful evening, everyone.